The year is 1945, and the first and only nuclear attack ever done. This destructive move, in an attempt to develop nuclear arms first, created the platform of our modern day movement against going nuclear. Is the movement right? Not completely. Most of the message is placed upon the fears of a nuclear winter and the destruction of the human race. This is mostly false, and I will spend this video telling you why. Before we begin, we need to know what is and how nuclear energy is harnessed. There are two types of atomic reactions, nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. Nuclear fusion occurs when atoms crash into each other at high speeds, combine and release light energy, the same way our sun produces energy. Nuclear fusion occurs when atoms split, crash into other atoms, and repeats over and over again. With each collision they release heat energy, we just seen what happens when it is weaponized. So nuclear fusion has been shown to work, but our technology just isn't ready to make it happen. So instead we rely on nuclear fission to get energy. In fact, nearly 11% of total energy production is from nuclear fission, with about 80% of it having installed capacity in OECD countries. Let's now talk about how we use nuclear fission to produce energy. There are currently three types of materials that can be used to do this. Uranium, Plutonium, and Thorium. For the purposes of this video, I'll be talking about Uranium, since it's the most commonly used. Why is it the most commonly used? That's coming up soon. Let's go into the reactor now. Before Uranium can be used, it must first be refined, then turned into pellets, and finally stacked vertically into fuel rods. They are then stacked near one another to make sure that a stable chain reaction can occur between the fuel rods. Now as for how we harness the energy, around the reactor is pressurized water. As the uranium releases its heat energy, the water around the reactor gets hotter, and it's circulated through pipes and steam generators which produce water vapor, spinning the attached turbine. After leaving the turbine, the steam is condensed, which means it becomes water again, and the cycle repeats itself. So how much energy do we get from nuclear fission? Well, quite a lot more than what we get from fossil fuels. A typical load gets us 1 million times more energy than we would get from fossil fuels. So why the big fuss over going nuclear when we get a million times more energy which would rapidly wipe out our energy demands? Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Chernobyl and Fukushima. These events showed the world what happens when nuclear goes nuclear. When the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, the world saw firsthand what happens when nuclear energy is weaponized. In 1986, there was a nuclear accident at Chernobyl which left massive amounts of radiation to this day. In 2011, Fukushima was yet another nuclear accident. So how many deaths were a direct result of these? In Hiroshima, 80,000 and Nagasaki, 40,000. In Chernobyl, 31 and Fukushima, 0. Wait, that's odd. When you ask people how many died in each of these events, the numbers are vastly different. Some believe millions died in the atomic bomb attacks, and hundreds of thousands died in Chernobyl, and thousands in Fukushima. This is what happens when a single catastrophic accident happens. Reality mixes with fear. Some activist groups play upon this fear and continue this misinformation, convincing the fearful that humanity will cease to exist if nuclear energy is not abandoned. From 1976 to now, there are actually 450 nuclear plants in operation throughout the world which have contributed to no deaths, and in fact have assisted in preserving human life. A NASA study found that nuclear energy is ideal for preventing human death, and have found that from 1979 to 2009, it has prevented around 1.8 million deaths. Also, in terms of the causes of death by energy production, it's found that nuclear energy ranks at the bottom of the pack. That's even including Chernobyl. So here we go, let's list off some benefits. Nuclear reactors have a much higher capacity than our traditional reactors, which means that more energy can be utilized resulting in higher base load generation. Alongside this, since the energy is converted to electricity, it can easily be integrated into our existing power grid with little cost. The environment also takes no hit as nuclear energy produces no greenhouse gas, which mitigates climate change. In fact, since 1976, 64 gigatons of CO2 were never released because of these reactors, and if used with renewable energy can drastically reduce CO2 emissions. 
Finally, if we switch to thorium, which most plants are attempting to do, the energy output is estimated to be greater than oil, coal, and uranium combined, and it eliminates the risk of nuclear production because it's extremely difficult to weaponize. Remember when I said, why is uranium commonly used? It's because uranium is much more easier to weaponize, as concluded by the 1997 International Scientific Symposium. So that's it. Nuclear won't end the human race. Rather, it is the beginning of eradicating our energy needs and saving our planet from man-made death. Like or dislike? Leave a comment telling me how you feel on this. Even I am on the fence about this sometimes. Subscribe, make sure you click that bell icon, and come back in two weeks for the next one.